anything particularly uh, anything particularly stand out in the first day? Positive. Uh, intensity level. I was very pleased with uh, the uh, just the competitiveness overall. Um, attitude. I thought our guys uh, in some competitions that uh, we had with some losing teams uh, handled it well. You know, handled the uh, accountability runs pretty well and. Uh, pretty high level of coachability uh, amongst teammates, you know, guys trying to help each other out and, uh, in the right way and, and uh, listening at a pretty high level to each other. So uh, overall, uh, we've got so far to go as every team does, but uh, I, I like those areas today. What have you thought of uh, Jalen's defensive effort in the past couple of days? Uh, pretty good. He was, he was pretty solid today. Um, he's he's got to get to where he's as, he's as excited about it as, as he is uh, the offensive side. He's uh, he's getting there. He knows. He knows. I mean, he's a great kid. And he's uh, trying to get out of that comfort zone a little bit. Half our team um, has a certain uh, comfort level about one thing or another that uh, that they've got to get out of, and, and that's that's it for him. There's some guys, it's being vocal. Some guys, it's rebounding. Uh, some guys, it's being aggressive offensively, uh, which is not Jalen, of course. Uh, but he was he was uh, very good today. How, how much better? I've always wondered, kind of, when, from when you were a player compared with now, just how much more prepared are guys when a season starts? I and mean, how much more quickly can they hit the ground running, so to speak, because of all the off-season conditioning and everything now? Um, we did that back in the day. I mean, it seemed like 100 years ago. It was put about 20 years ago. Yeah, 20. Um, I, I don't think that strength and conditioning was uh, embraced quite as much. Um, I'm not sure it was as much of a factor as it is today in, in a lot of programs, definitely this program. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, we took quite as much advantage of, of film work as as we do now in 2017 at, at University of Florida. So th those would probably be the biggest differences. I, I think we're more prepared, definitely, Edgar, today than, um, you know, as a 20-year-old as a we were uh, back then on the first day of practice. You know, with just those advancements in college basketball. I mean, I'm sure all programs are. But yeah, I, I definitely. Guess I'm just but, I mean, how do you get an edge there? I mean, I guess mm -hmm. what I'm saying, I mean, how, how do you accelerate it so that you guys are ahead by the time the season gets rolling? Yeah, I would say um, individual meetings with guys, uh, film work, using, using some, some film on the front end of practices uh, and workouts. Um, talking with guys, just, just being, hanging out with them off the court at times and just being able to talk through some stuff. Um, and then, of course, taking advantage of, of Preston and letting Preston just physically have our guys as ready uh, as they're going to be. I mean, we're, we're, we're in really good shape already. So that, that's probably the biggest factor. Uh, again, uh, 15, 20 years ago, you had to play yourself into shape by, uh, by your games in November, and our guys are ready to roll in that regard. It's more mental over the next six weeks for us in learning and our system and things like that, defining roles. It appeared uh, your projection offense ahead of defense looked that way from the portion that we watch. Yeah. Particularly guys like Keystone and uh, Gio yeah. and some other guys. What, what yeah, you, you guys came in at the end of practice and we made some, we made some shots there, including the, the cheese lefty floater uh, from 20 <laughs> feet. Um, it's funny because we spent way more, uh, way more time on defense to this point. Uh, we really haven't even gotten into offense. It just happened to be some shots going in, really, floor being spaced, and you got to – Got some skill level out there and uh, pretty good level of unselfishness, and it just happened to, to make some shots. It's a, it's a ways away, the SC schedule, but besides you guys in Kentucky, are there any other teams mm -hmm. that people should be looking out for that they may not necessarily be looking for? Yeah, I, I usually dodge these because, you know, I'm going to mention four or five, and then, uh, you know, four or five mm -hmm. teams are going to be mad, um, or I'm going to feel guilty that I left them out. And <laughs> Fair. I don't mean to tick anybody off, so, but I'm not going to dodge it. Um, I'll just do the best I can. I, I think that there's several teams in our league that, that, that are very, very good. I, I said this to somebody yesterday on, over the phone that um, I'd hate to have to pick like 10 through 14 in this league. It's, it's, it's as good a collection of talent uh, in the SEC, 1 through 14, as, as I've seen. Um, as, you know, I'm probably 20, 22 years being around the league, going to Ole Miss when I was 18 years old. Um, and I thought we were really talented last year, but I think we're even more talented now, this league as a whole, and we've got a little bit older. Uh, some of the younger, talented teams have now got some experience to complement that talent. Um, I think, you, you, I, think I, I really like Ole Miss's roster. I think Mississippi State will be better. Uh, the Rebels, you're grinning about the Rebels. Uh, 
I think Mississippi State will, will be good, and I think I think Auburn will be very good. And uh, uh, you've got Frank Martin, you've got Rick Barnes. I mean, uh, Texas A&M is going to be really good. Um, Alabama is going to be really good. Um, I mean, who am I forgetting? You, you guys mentioned three or four more to help me. I mean, I, I just think that there's a bunch of teams. Um, Missouri? Uh, Missouri's, my goodness. I mean, they're really good. They have a heck of an associated D up there. Um, it, it's just, it, it's, I hate to say wide open, wide open. You know, I don't, I don't mean to beat that up, but they're, uh, I, I, I think that we, we're going to have a chance, hopefully, to have six or eight teams knocking on the door getting the tournament. So, speaking of wide open, I mean, obviously, Chris and Kayvon, I can't imagine, will not be starting. But the other three positions is how hard fought do you expect this to be in the coming weeks? Um, at, at the five right now, with having three okay. centers over there on the sideline with me at practice, uh, Kavaris is just uh, leaps and bounds ahead of, of his competition, of course, and, and Dante Bassett's working and, and doing some good things um, and progressing. Uh, Keystone and, and Chase Johnson are, are going to be fighting at it at, at, at the four. And, and who knows when another big comes back, maybe you can play Kavaris there a little bit, maybe you can play some small ball, whatever our best lineups are, whatever the opponent and, and time and flow and score call for. Uh, you, you could play small with a, with a couple of the big threes that we have, you know, and then those those wing spots with with Igor and, and Jalen and, and DeAndre Ballard. I mean, they're they're going to be competing their butts off with each other every day. Obviously, the guys with experience are probably a little bit ahead right now. You saw it from Keith last year in spurts, and certainly today he was pretty impressive in getting some contested shots and what we saw. How, what's the trick in getting him to sustain it and to be, you know, the guy that? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's got to he's got to be more consistent. He, he knows that, just like every young player on, on this team and, and, and in our league and throughout college basketball. I think it's easier for you to, to remain consistent when you know what you're going to get. When when there's there's uh, uh, there's an expectation of how many minutes you're going to get or what your role is going to be. Uh, in in his defense, Keystone was a guy that was yanked in and out of the game a bunch last year as a as a freshman, and he's competing against seniors and a, and a really good junior, of course. So, um, I, I think Keith will find more um, comfort and more confidence knowing that uh, his number is going to be called more, and, it, and, and we expect him to play with confidence and be more consistent this year. Happened last year with Canyonberry, but this year with Igor Kulichov. Uh, how important and what ways did you take to make sure he was incorporated into the team properly? Yeah. Coming from basically two different schools and finally ending up here. Um, just we, we've had we've had conversations. Igor's very bright, and, and he knew not to come in here and, and uh, be the most vocal guy in the locker room from day one. He, he, he's a pretty empathetic guy. He, he, he's got a good feel for people. and. Um, I, I really didn't even need to, to explain that to him. He almost explained that to me on the front end. We talked about Canyon's experience and, um, and some of the things Canyon tried to do. And, and uh, uh, he, had, he had a pretty good plan coming in here just to just try to fit in, especially early on, earn trust with his teammates, develop close relationships off the court, and uh, lead by example. And then he's going to have times uh, as the season progresses uh, to, to be a little bit more vocal and, uh, and to give some opinions. How, um, how serious is Gorjak right now? I guess he just held him out, but yeah. how close is he to get back in? Um, we're hoping um, Duke will release him by next week. That was according to Duke uh, this morning. Um, it's, it's nothing major. You know, there wasn't a surgery or anything, but we understand with the, with the marathon ahead, with the six-month season, that uh, uh, he, he, we also, until he's at least, you know, in, until he's at least – Close to 100%. It, 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 there's no use in him practicing right now. If we had a game in a week, I, I'm sure Duke would have him practicing right now. So a, a year ago today, how did you feel about your team mm -hmm. in terms of its talent, its depth, and not knowing what was ahead? And then how do you kind of feel about this team comparatively? Yeah. Um, I would say uh, – if everyone were healthy, I'd feel like we're as deep, if not deeper. But we're so banged up that it's a little different. Um, it's hard to make that evaluation, of course. I, at this time last year, our biggest concern was was our locker room and and uh, how we can develop the culture that we want to develop here to, to to recreate what was what was once here. Um, uh, you know, at least a version of that. Uh, 
and 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 we, and we did that. I I really like the, our our collection of individuals, but we've got to find out if they're going to have the same collective culture as last year's group. So, um, this time last year, I was concerned whether we could do it. Well, we 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 did it. Now the concern is, can this group do it? Um, the concern is, I don't even know if I'm answering your question, Edgar. The concern is defensively, can we be as good? I'm not sure we're quite, that we're even as talented defensively. Um, therefore, we've got to be even more bought in defensively than last year's group and, and, and play for each other even more. Offensively, I have more confidence in this group than a year ago. I, I, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, you know, but uh, I think this group has more firepower offensively um, than, than we felt a year ago.